This winter is scary. If you're not in a camp that's experiencing anxiety over catching COVID, you may instead be in the camp that is tormented by loneliness and depression. So no better time for me to finally release my Canadian Winter Survival Guide. It's a two-part strategy of preparation and vigilance. Canadian winter is like going into a blizzard. If you don't prepare beforehand and you don't remain vigilant during, before you know it, it's a whiteout. You don't know what way is up, what way is down, and what's even happening. So naturally we start with preparation. These are the things that we do before the winter expedition occurs. Most of these things seem like they require self-discipline, but really they don't. They actually require you to game things so that doing the right thing is the easiest path. So here we are at the Outfitters before winter hits, getting ready to go. It's time to pick up some supplies and make some plans that you can't back out of. For your own good! The first thing on the shelf is what winter? In New Zealand, which is a country that comes up a lot, for some reason. Winter really isn't that much of a thing, you know. People don't get nervous about it and sit around looking sad going, well, summer's over. A lot of that is because in most countries you do activities in both the summer and the winter. In New Zealand, I bike to work in summer and I bike to work in winter. That meant I was getting 30 minutes of exercise a day without really thinking about it at all. But here's the thing, you can bike in winter and it's actually quite fun. You can still walk, you can still run, you can barbecue, you can hang out with your friends in a park. And not only that, Canada kind of has an advantage. You can't ski around in a public park in New Zealand. You can't skate on a beautiful lake right in the middle of town. You can't go to a cabin of sook or go ice fishing or have an indoor hydroponic garden that's pretty cheap to run or get free classes to learn a second language. Because of seasons, Canada has more to offer than other countries. We have all of the summer stuff and we have all of this fun winter stuff to do as well. Yeah, positive attitude. So in preparation, buying the right equipment means that you can carry on through the winter blizzard doing a lot of the activities that are what make summer fun and healthy. The reason a lot of people see winter as a negative is because they don't want to be uncomfortably cold. But come on guys, I mean summer here would be uncomfortable too if you were wearing a sweater the whole time. So buy the right gear. Look through your cupboard now and figure out what you might be missing. Have you got thermals, good boots, winter tires? Head on down to Mountain Equipment, not co-op, Mountain Equipment Corporation, Mountain Equipment Conglomerate. These are gonna be your Christmas presents for yourself this year. The next thing on the list, Google Calendar socializing. Global pandemic or not, all of us neglect our friendships with people, especially in the winter. Most of us have a core group of friends and family that we can call at random, the same people that would be in your COVID bubble. But that's only a few people. There are a lot of people we just can't call at random without feeling like we're imposing. What COVID and winter take from us isn't our core group, it's for outer friend group and acquaintances. But there's a lot of value to these people. They're the ones with fresh, different lives, often in other places, or people who may have been in that inner circle but have drifted away over time. These people make you feel connected to a society and to your past. So you're not just an isolated person with a couple of friends being buffeted by the cold winds of blizzard. Before you're in the middle of a whiteout, schedule social time with these people way, way, way ahead of time. Wait until a moment in the fall where you're feeling motivated and then write a template meeting description. Something like, hi, this winter I want some stuff to look forward to, so let's have a catch up. If this time doesn't work, let me know what would. Then go through your list of friends and send out invites, filling up your calendar for December through to February now. You are planting seeds for a winter harvest, like supply caches along the road. Doing it this way is easy. Sending out these invites took me maybe 30 minutes or so, but most importantly, I'm doing this when I'm feeling motivated. I'm using that day that I'm feeling good now to improve 20 days in the future, where I might not be. The invites are also a commitment mechanism. It makes it hard to back out. <laughs> I mean, it is kind of funny to imagine, you know, oh, I made this meeting, but uh, I'm gonna cancel it now. At worst, you're gonna reschedule, and almost certainly you'll be rescheduling it for in the winter, and that's the point. It's hard to cancel these appointments, and although in January, before the call, I might be feeling a little bit down, by the time I finish talking to a good old friend, I always feel great. A similar commitment mechanism that any Canadian winter outfitters will have on the list is a cheap break. A lot of Canadians have an emergency ripcord that they'll pull, like a trip to a tropical location. Well, this is really expensive and not always an option, like this year, for example. There is a much more practical alternative to the thousands of dollars, hassle of flights, all of your holidays used, tropical Mexico, fake flight shame on you, poolside privilege bar thing. You know, it's not smart. Instead, go for one or two easy cabin getaways for a fraction of a price. 
in preparation. Find a car or two, accommodation for the number of people that you want to go with. First come, first serve. It's this price on this weekend, take it or leave it. Invite easygoing people and ask for their deposit ahead of time. Have it booked and have it as something that you're looking forward to doing in January or February. This is like a beacon of light, visible in the blizzard, that will give you some hope. If you're not great at organizing people or prefer being alone, um, you can get everything booked right now, just for yourself, you loser. <laughs> Next, smart lighting. Sleep schedules are hard, even harder when so many people are working from home. That's why it's a great idea to invest in a wake lamp. For me, I have smart bulbs. These lights slowly turn on at the same time every morning and gradually wake you up. Even though I'm a person who sleeps in and works late, I almost always wake up at 10 a.m. You don't have to be up at the same time as everyone else, but you do have to be up at the same time as yourself, yesterday, or you'll be a sad panda. I highly recommend the smart bulb option, especially having a few of them, and then staggering them so that they slowly come on. It means that you can't just turn it off and to permanently disable the system, you'd have to decide to do that when you're fully awake because you're gonna have to fiddle around with the app. In preparation, make sure you grab yourself some smart bulbs before you enter the blizzard. Just jump on your retailer of choice or you could go to a shop and die. I'll put the cheapest ones that I can find that do the trick in the description. Plug them in and get them going now. Next thing, unsubscribe. Not for me, of course. The news may be a useful product. It may be an interesting product, but it is just not gonna make you happier. Now here's the deal. COVID, Trump, Biden, China, COVID, Biden, Trump, debate, Democrat, Republican, COVID, gerrymandering, Trudeau, trade war, China, Biden, Trump. Living next to America, there is an election there that occurs every second fall. Now here's the deal. It's not my country. There's nothing at all I can do. Win or lose, American politics has been horrible for my entire life. We had uh, President Oil War Jr., President Disappointment, and now President Twat. You'll hear when supermarkets are closed because of a blizzard or if there's a global pandemic that you need to prepare for. You don't need to actively read the news. The news is really a low quality, hot take product. The first draft of history, as they say. If you wanna be wise, stop reading the draft and start reading the finished product. So in preparation for winter, write down the stuff that you think is good that you subscribe to, but maybe not good for you when you're feeling down. Podcasts, Twitter accounts, YouTubers that aren't me, and news sources. Unsubscribe. You can resubscribe later if you ever actually think that you need more hyperventilating news that is so close to the event that it's probably wrong and uh, that you are absolutely powerless to change. Instead, check out local news. It impacts you and you can impact it. No outfitters in Canada would be complete without a humid environment. There's a reason why cold winter cultures around the world have a tradition of hot spas and sweaty men. Experiencing humidity and heat is great after going without it for a few months. Personally, I find I often get a persistent cough uh, during the winter, and the only way to get rid of it is with humidity. In preparation, you can buy a humidifier, but you can also pre-book spas beforehand and get cards that you have to use within a certain amount of time for a spa. If you're lucky enough to have a public pool that's open, swimming throughout the winter months is a good idea. Personally, I find lane swimming torturously boring, but uh, you can get uh, waterproof audio entertainment stuff these days, so maybe that'll help. I do find it funny though how often the end of I bought some waterproof whatever story is, and that's why I need a new phone. With all this preparation, you're trying to game things so that making the right decision is easier than making the wrong decision. Because when you're in a blizzard, lying on your couch, feeling terrible, wondering if you should see a therapist or something, they're just gonna tell you, hey dickhead, did you think about taking a weekend off? that they will probably also say something like, you should exercise each day. And that's not something that you can prepare for. That's something that you have to do during a blizzard because now we're leaving the outfitter's preparation stage and instead moving into the vigilance stage. A set of behaviors that need to be repeated so once you're in the blizzard, you don't get lost. These are things that occur every day like exercising or practicing an instrument. But discipline is no problem. These can be gamed too, if you use the achievement allowance. I mentioned in a previous video that I have a Coho card for my spending, there it is. This is a bank account that I keep just a little bit of money in for my day-to-day -day expenses. My main bank account, my login, my password, my debit card, all of that, I don't have them. I haven't had them for quite a while. That random password and all of my cards stay locked in a drawer at a friend's house. They never leave and all their payment details have been removed from every Amazon, Apple and Google Pay account that I have. That means the only money that I have to spend is on this prepaid card. So how does that help me do my pull-ups? It's down to the achievement allowance spreadsheet. 
I have a spreadsheet with days down the left hand side and things which I'd like to do every day across the top, with evaluation for each task. Every day I check off the things that I did that day. I've priced things so that generally the hard tasks are worth more and the easier ones are worth less. So check this sheet, 25 cents. I get that one for free. No alcohol, $3. Go for a run or a bike, $4. Only speak French that day, $10. And for this month, 50 pull-ups for $4. Every month, I go to my friend's house, log into my bank account, I pay my rent and utilities, buy any big ticket items, and then I check the bottom of the sheet and transfer my spending money to the Coho card. That same friend, my commitment buddy, has full access to the spreadsheet and can see if I retrospectively went and changed a bunch of stuff. When they are also participating, it becomes like a team going through the blizzard together, making sure each other are following the right procedures on their checklist, moving forward in the right direction. If your team member is someone you totally trust, then you can give them permission to log into your bank and send the money so you don't have to make the trip <laughs> if you need money mid-month, which does sometimes happen. Now, if I nail it and do every single thing every single day, I'm gonna be able to live my most affluent life, buy all the beer and nice food I want. But if I don't, there's this weird thing that happens. As you have less spending money during a month, you end up living healthier anyway. Alcohol, tobacco, nice cheese, they're all really expensive. So when you don't have enough money, you end up doing the rice and peas. You walk or ride places more, bars are out of a question. In the months where I have done the worst at accomplishing my daily goals, I've also drunk a lot less and lost a fair bit of weight. In the months where I've been best at accomplishing my daily goals, I have exercised a ton, learned a lot more French, and gotten to celebrate that achievement with some of that top shelf beer. It's kind of impossible to lose. Of course, this has led to some funny moments. There were two weeks where I had no milk for my coffee, which sucked, and uh, a week where I only had rice and bees. But you get good at handling that. I now have a bag of emergency milk powder and some frozen vegetables in my freezer, just in case. In general, I've saved a shit ton of money and had a much healthier year than uh, ever before. I seem to be doing a lot better than other people and I think it's got something to do with this. The Achievement Allowance spreadsheet is up on Patreon if people want to give it a go. I also have a link to Coho uh, below in the description. By following that method, I guarantee that you'll nail the regular aspect, if sticking to something for three to four months is a challenge for you. So now, what do you actually plug in to the daily goal? Exercise mission. Every good winter vigilance plan will include exercise, but I hate that because everyone will say exercise about everything. Or team sports, I mean you get both exercise and social fulfillment. That sounds great! Unless because you've never played a sport, you can't join a team without sucking ass and being publicly humiliated while also letting down a group of people at the same time. So no shit, the entire world knows that exercise is good. Team sports even better, but most of the world doesn't do that enough. You might not have the exercise or sports gene. You're not getting enough endorphins or whatever makes other people love it so much. But what you might have is the medium term challenge gene. Instead of planning to fail, just plan to finish in the spring with a physical challenge that you'll probably be able to complete in that time. This year I'm gonna try doing five muscle ups inspired by another YouTuber who took a couple of months to do them, and that's perfect. You might try a certain number of push ups or a certain difficult yoga position, or a certain distance on a treadmill in whatever time. But don't get a gym membership, just do your one thing for a few months. You're just trying to get to spring doing something. And once spring hits, you don't need to do it anymore until November. Yay! Who knows, you might end up picking up a good long term habit, but that's just a nice bonus. Also, turn to a person that you know and tell them, Hi, I'm going to be doing this moderately challenging but totally doable thing for the winter. Let people know the overarching challenge that your regular exercise is working towards. Aside from the daily exercise vigilance, your team making its way through the storm should have a complementary, non-physical activity that you do, you know, when you're camping for the night. Most nerdy and creative hobbies are totally Winter proof! Drummer Brother gets an immense satisfaction out of Dungeons and Dragons in addition to his daily dose of drumming. This is definitely one of the things that I've leaned into the most over my winters of I WILL NOT BE SAD! I have learnt to paint, woodwork, brew, I've done hydroponics, uh, animation, podcasting, I've written tons of stuff. Whatever you gotta do to get through it, you know? I've leaned into this the most because I've always found exercise for the sake of exercise really boring. That's okay too, not everyone is going to have the same vigilance mix, you know? So for these indoor and intellectual things, basically you say, I want to accomplish a book by February, and then you add write to the achievements sheet. 
a lot of things will say, write 1000 words or paint for an hour or whatever. But I think that's really bad advice. Trying every day and seeing if you're feeling it is absolutely fine. If you got all your painting stuff out and uh, you started and you went for 10 minutes and you just aren't getting anywhere, it's okay to pack it all up and try it again tomorrow. You did good. Contrary to popular belief, being good at trying regularly is actually more important than some type A masochistic, I fucking hate this but I must overcome it, self-torture. All that leads to is you thinking, fuck it. I'm not getting these paints out because it would end in me feeling useless and spending a whole hour like hating myself or whatever. The reason to set it up as an open-ended thing with no specific timing is that you'll have days where you write until 2am in the morning and just crush it. You don't want to cap those days when you're in the zone, but you also want to give yourself enough opportunities to test the waters and see if you're in that mood. If you have a 10 minute minimum, it's enough to test them, get a bit done, but not torment yourself when you're not really feeling it. Same thing happens with exercise stuff. Some days I can run for an hour, other days I'm like, Jesus, what the fuck is wrong with me? After like five minutes. I'm not an athlete trying to push through the pain. It's a lot easier to put on the running shoes and hit out the door if I know I can bail after 10 minutes. It's really just about making the deal with yourself that you will make an honest attempt to have a go at a thing each day. You can also make use of temptation bundling, where you set a thing up like, I can only watch a movie if I am painting, or I can only drink a beer if I am studying French. Studying French almost always makes me feel like drinking. You might end up being an alcoholic, but at least you'll be fluent. So in conclusion, the blizzard blowing in any winter can be daunting. And this one is more extreme than any other that I've seen. But with a strict strategy of preparation and vigilance, you can come out of this winter with some achievements and abilities. So get started on preparation early at the Outfitters before the blizzard hits. Book that trip, schedule those calls with friends, Get the equipment that'll make you say, what winter, or even, yay, winter. Do Canada the right way. And then once the winter hits, switch into a vigilant stance. Choose a thing which you want to accomplish physically or hobby-wise this winter. Turn this winter into the winter where you learnt to do X and got Y done. And jump in the comments if you want to help me fill those blanks with ideas for good exercises and creative challenges. Ones that you can learn in three to four months or so. Let's help each other get through this by increasing my engagement metrics. By the way, this was a pretty spur of the moment video. If anyone happens to choose to uh, make some music this winter, please uh, get in touch with me if you'd be interested in putting it up on the channel. I am always looking for something to replace the horrible stock music. 50 pull-ups. 50, 50 dollars. That'd be crazy. And well, a dollar a pull up. Drummer brother gets an immense amount of satisfaction out of drumming in addition to his daily drums. Where's mine, mate? Okay. A little bit needy. <laughs> Get your own commitment mechanism. 